being okay welcome everybody uh, to our june executive committee meeting um we will start as always with approval of the executive committee minutes from may 3rd um they were distributed are there any comments on the minutes all right well so um uh, let me just also do this so I could see seeing no hands. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay. Sorry. Second. Thank you. The minutes are unanimously approved. Okay. Ah, you should have had attendance first. Go ahead, <laughs> Margaret. Hi, good evening. Hi. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Uh, the roll, the attendance, the roll call. Yes. Yep. Right. Sure. Um, jumping into it. Sylvia Alexander. Here. Constance Barnes Watson. No, no, no. Um, just the executive people. Uh, looking at the full at the um, full board list. I have the executive. Uh, you want me to do it, Margaret? I have the right here. Uh, sure. Yeah, because I only have the full board. Yeah, the, okay. Um, Sylvia Alexander here. Bob Bender here. Kelly Buford here. Lee Chong uh, called. She's not able to be here. In her stead is Vice Chair Julie Reyes. Okay. Here. Yep. Um, Margaret Dellas here. Um, Bob, Bob Fanuzzi is here for uh, uh, environment and sanitation for, um, he's vice chair. I'm here. Bob, Bob Fanuzzi, you're here? Good. Okay. I am. Uh, Nick Fazio. Here. David Gelman. Present. Rosemary Ginty. Still here. Julie, Julia Gomez. Here. Ed Green. Ed? I'll circle back. Scott. Scott Croppinger. All right, here. Yep. Uh, Chuck Merdler. Here. Uh, Omar Murray. I saw Omar. Omar? You may, you may be your, you're muted, Omar. Present, present. Yeah. Um, I'm looking through this list. Laura Spalter here. Um, Deb Travis. Present. Sergio Villaverde. Sergio? Okay. Marty Walpoff. Marty? Okay, so no response, uh, Sergio and Marty, and there was one other I thought I was gonna circle back to. Ed Green. Ed Green, ah, Ed, are you there? Ed, no, okay, so we did that. We approved the minutes, um, chair's report. I will be brief, just. Just one minute. Without my notes, then the water. Okay, let me just take this off the screen. Okay. First, I want to welcome uh, Farah Q. Rubin, who's uh, running this meeting, and welcome, Farah. Welcome. Uh, Thank to, you. To your first exec. <laughs> um, I want to talk a few minutes about we're returning to in-person meetings uh, starting on June 20th. We'll be meeting in person again. Um, our goal is to conduct hybrid meetings, allowing guests and the community to zoom in. Our June 29th full board meeting will be held at the College of Mount St. Vincent. Um, at the land use meeting was discussed having a pre-land use meeting at six o'clock on the night of the full board. That's been canceled. Um, I'm not sure something went out to the land use committee about that, but 
what will happen is, uh, since we don't have to vote till December, uh, September, we will have further discussion on a city planning item in September and a vote in September. Um, most of the meetings will be in our conference room because it is set up a hybrid. This will work uh, is with just the committee members coming to the conference room and the public and uh, guest speakers coming in on Zoom. And the agendas that go out will, you know, kind of clarify what's preferred here. And then it should work for the committee meetings. Um, extraordinary circumstances will apply to the hybrid meetings if the committee chair so chooses to have a hybrid meeting. And just to give you a very quick uh, rundown, a review, we will be sending, you know, more information out. If you, oh, that's Marty. Hold on. Hello, Marty. Marty's not getting in, Barra. See if there's, okay. All right. Hope to be taken care of. Okay. I'm glad he called. Um, let me just. He's not on the wait list. Can he try to re sign in? Um, let me call him back. Marty? Bear, in the interim, have we run. Marty, try signing in again because you're not in the waiting. We run this idea of. Uh, okay, try sign out, sign in again. Physically attending so by the borough president's okay. office. I'm sorry, David. What, yeah, say yeah, that no, again? Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, the idea of the um, uh, community members not attending in person, have we run that by the borough president's office to make sure it's kosher? Because I can see somebody about, complaining about it. Wait, wait, you're talking about community committee members? Uh, and, Anybody who is not a board member. Yeah, anybody who is not a board member doesn't have to appear in person. But if they that want is... to, yeah, you're suggesting that uh, there's not enough room for them, aren't you? Yes, because we're, we're suggesting, but there will be room for a few people if that's what they want to do. Okay, all right. That's fine. That's not what you said before. That's fine. I, I Well, we will try to do our preference. I mean, it's been working when we've had some large meetings with large uh, amount of people signing on that's what's happened uh, yeah. they haven't come to the office they haven't come to the office but right. this is going to be a big experiment but no I hear you but what I was saying just in a nutshell and uh, Farah look and see if Marty Wolpoff is coming in you know yes I just let him in oh perfect perfect mm -hmm. okay um, in a nutshell if you cannot make that meeting and you have to be in person because you're a board member you have to call the committee chair uh, yeah, no, email, I know. We, 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 a Gmail. Excuse me. I know we 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 set that up a long time ago. Excuse me. It, uh, can I finish what I have to say? Sure. Thank you. You would, if it's a full board meeting, you call me, um, and you email me. Put it that way. But if you want to make sure I see your your email, so maybe text as well. And then you have to get written permission. Um, and then you uh, you just call in. You will not count for quorum, but you'll be able to vote and you'll be able to participate. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything works. Um, we're pretty sure it's gonna work when we meet in the office and it'll be an experiment. I picked the Mount Saint College of Mount St. Vincent for the June meeting because they do have Zoom meetings for students. They have a big screen. They seem to be very well set up. We know they have Wi-Fi. So I thought that was a good choice for um, the final meeting. No, and I, I we'll agree. be sending out the procedures guide just as a reminder, but basically in a nutshell, um, that's it. Um, right, no, but what I was getting at, Laura, was mm -hmm. The, the language we sent out to the community saying that for committee meetings, we anticipate that space will be tight. So where possible, we encourage you to go, uh, you know, via Zoom, uh, though you are uh, entitled to attend in person. 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's all. You, you, you didn't mention that before. I just wanted to make sure we covered that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, um, I would like to share with the executive committee um, the Irving Latimer Community Service Award. Um, the committee, the ad hoc committee was composed of Bob Kaplan, Chris Calhoun, and Leona Tetton. Um, they received um, nominations and they have chosen to honor Karina Munoz in the fall. We'll have that, uh, that ceremony. Um, a word about Karina Munoz. She received two nominations actually for this award and she met all the volunteer criteria. Uh, she founded the Carrie and Pepper Project. This is a group that picks up litter in parks such as Seton and Ewan, uh, Johnson Avenue, Henry Hudson Parkway. She started that a few years ago and she has continued. She cooks at a shelter, she volunteers, she organizes toy drives. Uh, at Christmas for the shelters. She is a veterinarian technician and she volunteers her time and expertise to help people and their pets. Uh, many animals have been rescued and found permanent homes due to her efforts and she contributes to vaccination programs. So um, that's that. And I just wanted to share um, that with the executive committee and it'll be also announced at the June meeting but the ceremony will be in September. Um, the office got a FOIL. I just wanna report that on May 26, the board received a FOIL request from R Rosemary Ginty regarding correspondence with the School Construction Authority. And of course, we are responding to that FOIL. Um, we have something new from the Borough President's Office, um, BP Gibson's Code of Conduct for board members. And I just want to pass that members who um, just received their uh, reappointments are signing on to, uh, you know, are being asked to acknowledge reading the code of conduct um, and sending in their signed and dated, uh, you know, acknowledgement. But it's also gonna go to all board members in June. So uh, everybody uh, will be signing on to that and they're taking a very, um, um, it, they're stating expectations and it has to do with behavior, with attendance, with community engagement, with, uh, you know, different criteria and you'll all be getting that shortly. Um, and I think that it's a, it's a very powerful statement and I think that it will, be helpful to all boards. And that's why she's doing that. Um, let me see. Moving forward, when we go into executive session, there was a question raised at the last executive meeting. I think it was the last one, yes. Whether uh, staff could attend executive session. Um, we asked for guidance from the Committee on Open Government, and we did get a response that staff may attend. Um, Kristen O'Neill sent something, uh, sent different opinions, which I forwarded to Marty. And overall, if it's, there's nothing that says they cannot attend. The question was last time, perhaps because it was the DM report, some people were not comfortable. It was the DM hiring. So, um, you know, we asked the staff to leave um, and, and, that, and that was fine. But moving forward, I was just wanting to clarify whether there was a rule somewhere that when you have executive session of the board, only board members may attend. And that doesn't, that's, doesn't exist. So. I just wanted to clarify that for moving forward. Um, let me see. I think that's about it for my notes. And we'll move on to the treasurer's report. Scott? Uh, Madam Chair, I just have my hand up if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm not showing participants. I'll click that on. Go ahead, Rosemary. Okay. Um, 
uh, just your um, notice to the executive committee of uh, the FOIL request. Um, I think just to complete uh, the story briefly, uh, this was information uh, requested in the Land Use Committee, uh, I think back in April. Um, and um, uh, while we got a lot of information from the office, mostly from building department, uh, the um, school construction authority piece uh, was not part of that package. And I requested an email probably a month and a half ago and uh, received no response. About 10 days later, I requested again and I got no response. And then another 10 or 12 days went, I did another email and um, got no response. It is the last thing in the world I wanted to do a full request, but since April and three emails to the office with no response, I felt I didn't have any options. So that, that just, um, just uh, fills out the story just a bit further. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. I think what happened was lacking a DM and since April, uh, we've had May, now we're in June, we haven't, uh, Pablo's been largely out of work. So it was, it was just loop. And so things were overwhelming. And I, I certainly understood and we will definitely, you know, respond. But I think that's a lot of things kind of fell through the cracks. We only had Luke and me and uh, we were doing the best we could, but absolutely. And, and, so. and Luke, is, Luke is so responsive. That's what was a bit um, uh, not yeah, shocking. I but that but word, the, that, there was no response at all. So right. that, that was- so. No, okay. understood. That's fine. Mm -hmm. that, that's fine. Okay, um, seeing no other hands, we will um, move on to the treasurer's report. Scott. All right, thanks, Laura. Um, Farah, are we gonna, do you have the report to share on the screen? Yes, yeah, so let me. Um, get that up for you. Thank you, great. Okay, so on the screen is the June uh, 2023 report. Table one shows an update of personal services, uh, salaries paid and the amount remaining. It also reflects OTPS other than persons balance of 14,155, which is broken down a little bit further in table 1.1. I'll just say that 14,000 figure is, is outdated. Um, so this report is based on an OMB report from June 1st, so about a week ago. Additional purchases have well, it, but they're still processing, so they're just not. Sorry? You know what, you were fading in and out for a second, oh, Scott. Am I still here? Okay. Now I hear you, okay. Okay, I, I was saying that the 14,155 is a little outdated because, um, this report is based on a OMB report from June 1st, so about a week ago. Additional purchases have been made, but they're still being processed by OMB. Um, the purchases that are reflected in this report, about $8,000 worth of purchases from last month, include backpacks, hats, folders, uh, promotional items like hand sanitizer, uh, little hand sanitizer kits, first aid kits, dog bag holders, and keychain lights. Items that have been purchased that aren't reflected here in this report yet um, include office supplies, uh, more promotional items like tote bags, trifold brochures uh, for tabling, that MiFi system, the personal hotspot system that I talked about last month, as well as three laptops for the uh, for the office staff to replace the obsolete laptops that they're, they're using now. So there's about $8,500 worth of OTPS items that have been purchased. They're just being processed and they don't, they're not reflecting in the, in the balance here. But by June 29th, by the full board meeting, the, the full, um, more updated and accurate uh, picture of the OTPS remaining balance. Um, table. Three thirty-five. Uh, and finally, 1.4 is the rent energy detail, which is maintained separately by LB, but we keep track of it here for, for reference. So that's my report. This Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've also ordered a trifold um, 
for yeah, the brochure. community board brochure that uh, we would also have in Spanish. And uh, so there are a lot of promotional items and things coming in like crazy. So um, it's good. Uh, I see Marty's hand up. Uh, yeah, yes, please, uh, uh, Scott. On the first chart, you said that the next report you make in a couple of weeks will be more uh, more reflective of, of reality. But uh, my question is, when this when that shows up, how much will be remaining? So when we get the updated on the um, around $8,500 additional spending that's not reflected here. So OTPS, the remaining balance, I would say, is 14000 minus 8500 So just $6,000, 5000 or $6,000. Thank you. We were at the uh, Sunday fair. And of course, we're going to be tabling on Sunday, God willing, with the with the with the weather. And uh, we were saying, why don't we have um, what are those things called that go over your table, off your shade? The word is escaping me. You know what I'm talking tent, about. Tent or canopy. Yeah, canopy. Thank you. And I said, it's not too late. Let's order one <laughs> because the sun was beating down on us. As long as they don't um, blow we're away. We're still right? spending money. We, you know what I mean? When all this, this this clears, we'll see how much we have left and what else we can possibly squeeze in. So uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, just quickly. I forget the um, that large amount of personal services. Um, can we do anything with that or, um, or not in the next uh, three weeks? I don't think there's any plans for that, no. I, can we do anything else with it? I don't, I don't think so. I think it will require okay. modification. Yeah. Okay. I think it will require modification. Yeah. Okay. So moving along, um, Farah, you're on. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. And I do plan on reaching out to each one of you. Um, first order of, of business was getting my email account to work. Um, I'm having some issues with access. So as soon as I get that, um, I want to um, contact you there. Uh, and I'm also very glad to hear that we're getting updated laptops. This is why I, I have to use my other account right now to log in because the microphone does not seem to be working on the laptop. But we, we managed to make everything work tonight, so, yeah. so that's good. Um, in the meantime, I have been warmly welcomed this week by um, Luke, Pablo, and our chair, Laura. So I want to thank you. And um, I'm really just spending the last few days learning about everything, our systems, how the overall office works, and just to really see how I can make sure everything's running smoothly in the office. Um, I posted on Facebook today uh, a first social media post for me, and I'm working on um, scheduling a district service cabinet meeting for the end of the month, and I'll be doing that tomorrow. I'm hoping it's going to be on June 26th, and I will ask you to send me any problems or issues that you think would be appropriate to follow up on at that, at, with the agencies at that meeting. And that's it for me right now. Um, I'm I'm having a great week, and I appreciate having the opportunity to be the district manager. So thank you. Well, you're starting on Monday. I'm having a great week too. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> um, okay, we'll put up the committee resolutions. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Um, here we go. And we want the resolutions. You don't, do you want the report of district manager search or just the resolution? Um, that was sent out to everybody. Uh, I don't know if there's any comments on that for Bob. I don't see any hands. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bob for 
sending that out. Uh, this resolution is from the Parks and Recreation. Hang on one second. Farrah, can you uh, collapse that right column? Yeah, I don't. Just, cl just yeah. click on that arrow uh, where you uh, next to combine files. Wait a minute. I got to get, I have something else over there. Okay. So this one? No, no, no. The arrow just to the left, so left of it. To the left of I it. I got it. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Much better. Thank you. Sure. Um, Bob Panuzzi and Deb, um, who would like to start to, uh, to speak to this? Hey, Deb. Oh, what'd you say, Bob? You want me to go? Um, I'll just say that this is the second in a story of community board resolutions on this, um, particular project. Um, and Deb, why don't you, um, go from there? Well, so um, the, when, when Bob talks about there being another, or he's basically referring to the, the May resolution of last year. And in that resolution, when, after kind of the initial presentation, when we were still very much in kind of a theoretical space, um, we did a much more um, detailed um, uh, resolution. And that resolution contained the whole history and then kind of a lot of the, the issues and things that more broadly we were concerned with. Um, and so uh, when we came time for this resolution, our approach was really to um, to use that first resolution as a touch point um, if you need to go back to that history and to have this resolution be both specifically focused on just this uh, this project as it exists um, <clears throat> and to uh, and to you know just kind of um, speak to just, the kind of the outstanding issues. I will say that the um, the, the the tag group and the um, the meetings that we've been having have, have been very productive, and that um, that the both uh, DEP and the Parks Department, all of their rep representatives have. You know, I think that the feeling from the certainly from the Parks Committee, and I'm a member of the ENS Committee, and that I can speak to some degree to that as well. That I think both committees felt as though um, our feedback was heard and they incorporated it to the degree that they were able to and staying within budget, knowing that they're uh, managing a lot of different um, moving pieces. Um, there is certainly one outstanding issue, which is that from 230th to 25th, um, the, the Greenway doesn't go you know, south of 230th currently. And that um, there's a, the CSX still has that. The, we made a very conscious um, decision to not include that as part of this project because that particular piece is not part of this project and that this project is specifically about the, the lake, the daylighting, um, and the greenway that goes from Van Cortlandt Park to 230th. So um, I think that's kind of high level. I'm happy to kind of read through it if, if folks would like me to or happy to take questions or Bob, if there's anything you'd like to add. Yeah, Deb. Thanks, Deb. So um, everybody, this is the second of three presentations that the joint um, sponsors of this project will present to the community board. The first was conceptual um, and that was in um, May and June of last year. Um, we took a vote on it in June. Um, this is the second level and the um, project has advanced. Um, this is called preliminary design. And then the third is final. Um, and so we are in the middle section right now. Um, as you can see from the whereas clause right before it be it resolved, the committees took care to check back, as Deb said, on our priorities that we had um, on both sides, parks and um, environment. And we really did see, committees did absolutely see that their priorities had been turned into tangible design that we saw. So um, we present this to this committee and then we'll present it to the full board in June for vote. The uh, PDC, this is a public design commission hearing that will be held in August. Um, so this obviously is the last action we can take in this particular uh, season of the community board before we break. And um, this will be part of their deliberations that they reach on preliminary design of the Putnam Greenway and Daylighting Project in August. So are there any questions? I'd like to make a comment. Um, I just wanna 
comment how far the plan has come from a year ago. It's amazing. We had a be it resolved in last June's um, a resolution. It said that the Bronx Community Board 8 recognizes the lack of park features in the design presented to BDC for conceptual review and calls for DPR to enhance them in future presentations to relevant Bronx Community Board 8 committees and future designs to BDC. And I have to say they really uh, with the help of uh, Star White House, landscape architects, uh, they really did a lot to address the concerns on the lack of park value, so to speak. So I, I think that um, they've done a good job, and I think this resolution does a good job um, in approving and asking them to come back. Um, that's yep. my comment right now. We, David, did we get another up. view? What, what we have oh. seen so far really represents a fantastic leap forward in yeah. Greenway planning that incorporates nature to an incredible extent um, for resilience purposes, for sound deadening purposes, for air quality purposes. Um, this really is a beautiful and I predict it will be an award-winning design. I think there are several en entrances to Broadway, many that there are, um... Oh, Laura, let me let me bring out that that um, there are two major changes, folks, from what you saw in uh, last iteration because of floodplain and flooding issues. The daylighting will actually no longer be above ground open shadow at relatively um, the the street known as Naples Terrace or across from Naples Terrace. OK, and at that point, it will be piped underground. OK, and that's really because of flooding and the engineering just didn't work there. But yeah, as well, a we said it was too narrow. It, 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 you know, there were certain part, portions that were very narrow. And this way, it's better for the pedestrians because the greenway will that be, is right. the, uh, that is right. the pipe will be underground because there just wasn't room there. It just makes the so whole that, thing spacious. That opens up. There were many competing priorities, uh, yeah. stream versus park. And so park won out at that point. And... Um, now there will also be an additional exit at 230th Street, okay? And that was one of the priorities that we had going into this last year, that there was a, a logical exit point onto the, you know, the, the projected continuation or the Broadway or the Bailey quarters that we'll be going onto. So um, that's definitely something we are looking at still, but now there are, is an extra egress and ingress at 230th Street, which there wasn't before. Uh, okay, because... I see two hands, um, David and Chuck. David? Yeah, uh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. Um, I, I agree. The, the This design is far better than the uh, previous one. It actually is much more park-like rather than just a uh, uh, the concrete uh, sluice way. Um, but a, a couple of things. Um, I, and I, I brought this up uh, at, at the uh, committee meeting. Um, uh, in the tag meetings that we did have, it was made... Uh, clear by many people that there was a desire for the, this to go all the way down to the Harlem River. Uh, short 30 yards, because you have to go underneath the, the Hudson Line uh, railroad tracks, but basically from 230 beyond 225. And that property, I, I'm reasonably certain, is not uh, any longer a part of CSX, but under the control of Metro North. And so what I wanted to do um, was to add a provision here uh, into this resolution uh, that's actually in line with other resolutions we have sent. Um, ENS had one uh, that talked about the um, uh, New York Harbor, which is 15 miles away, and concerns about that. And Parks had a resolution uh, that dealt with the number of, uh, while wanting to have a um, uh, a, um, a PEP station in Van Cortlandt Park, but it also said we'd like to have uh, a certain number of uh, PEP officers per shift. So in that vein, I think it's uh, worthwhile that we have a clause that say that uh, we would like um, uh, DEP or the project management or what, what have you to uh, make all uh, uh, reasonable efforts to uh, uh, with our electeds to uh, make sure that um, the, 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 that space between 230th and uh, 225, um, that Metro North moves, moves its uh, trash uh, sorting um, uh, location behind 
uh, Marble Hill uh, further down. And actually, I have some pictures of how it could really work quite well um, underneath the high bridge. There's some, uh, basically, there's a junkyard of uh, rails um, underneath the high bridge. So at any rate, I think we should have a clause saying uh, that is the desire of uh, community board, Bronx Community Board 8, that um, the, the Metro North um, um, recycling sorting uh, area be moved uh, uh, downriver to the high bridge um, uh, property of uh, Metro North. So I would like to take all questions, Deb. I'd like all community board members to address questions and then we'll summarize our comments. So mm -hmm. were there other hands up, Laura? I'm sorry. Chuck's hand is up. Yes, yeah. Chuck, go ahead. Um, at the land use committee the other night, uh, the Greenway issue came up in the back door. There is an application for a change of zone, which is probably a spot zoning problem too, mm. um, that where the backyard of the property literally is adjacent to the Greenway. And so we call that to the attention of the owner and of the applicant's lawyer and said, uh, that is something you need to have a conversation with our Greenway people to see yeah. if uh, you guys can work together to achieve a result. So whoever's minding the store on that Greenway ought to please check with the office and you'll get the name. I think the lawyer's name is Saint-Jacques at Ackerman, um, and they are awaiting word from you. Um, Thank you. May I, may I just say that um, Luke has uh, introduced the, the owner, uh, Jacques, that name, and the DEP um, stakeholders, everybody. They've all been introduced the day after the land use meeting. Good. And they've been communicating, you know, they are starting to communicate with each other. So that was a, a, a great uh, melting pot there. Be aware, just so that we're not kidding ourselves here. I think they've got real problems uh, in terms of being able to do it by way of rezoning. I think uh, our resident expert on zoning, uh, Rosemary, agrees with that one, um, that they really should be going for a variance rather than proceeding in this fashion. Yeah. Anybody can challenge it until they get some vested rights. I, I heard about this and I'd like to look into it further about whether there's any limitations on uh, contigu relating to contiguity to a new parkland. Um, I don't know, but um, this is tr troubling. You don't want a, a brick wall right up against a new park. No, they, I don't uh, think you're going to have that. I think they are required to have 60 feet in the back or 30 feet minimum because of the way that they're configuring the building. The open space. There's, yep. There is 30 feet between their property and the Greenway. Right. 30 feet, the okay. Issue, the issue I have is, query, is there something you can do together that can help both of you? Or if you- Interesting, Chuck. That's very interesting. The 30 foot open space requirement applies here. That's really interesting. It could be an access route, for instance. That's the point. Interesting. Thanks. Well, the parties um, have all been connected. Are there any other questions? Well, no, no, no. It, have they been connected to the committee? No, no. The, um, the DEP parks and the owner of that property are all speaking. With all respect, I don't care about DEP or parks. I care no. about the committee, that it has an opportunity to function at the earliest possible date. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Marty. Marty, I have, I have two, uh, two thoughts. First of all, the resolution needs to be changed with respect to all the where uh, therefore be resolved. It yes. comes from community board, it doesn't come from the committees anymore. Correct. Thank you. So those have to be worked on. And second, I'm curious to hear Bob's answer relative to what uh, David brought up. Um, are we, is there a space in here or in the thinking that at some point in the future uh, the greenway will be extended uh, to go further south and whether or not there's any consideration of moving that uh, compactor um, 
of the facility. Yeah. So Marty, um, uh, 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 Bob, you you want to get all the comments in beforehand? Yeah, we're there. Okay. Yeah, yeah just one more thing. One. Just one, uh, one more thing. Um, just uh, one yes, comment, uh, the customer. Yeah. The, the 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 plan for the greenway is to go all the way down along the Harlem I, I, River. I can answer the uh, the uh, question. Bob, Chair, Bob, just Madam let me Chair, finish, please. Chair, point of information, point of order. The question was addressed to me. May uh, I? Okay, answer, you said before you wanted I to get all the comments the before you responded. Bob Benuzzi, you have the floor. May I answer the yes, question? Absolutely. That was, you absolutely. don't have the power to give that answer, David. The chair does. Point of order. Thank you. Marty and David, here's, here's the answer to your question. Right now, the property line that is within this design stops at 230th Street. That is what has been acquired by the city of New York or is in process of being acquired for Stop. daylighting and greenway. Okay. So the PDC will be looking, the Public Design Commission is in the process of approving design. They are not in the process or the business of approving route, okay? The, the question of route falls with multiple agencies outside PDC, okay? This is like bringing a parking ticket. If the, the equivalence is bringing a parking ticket to the library, okay? PDC does not decide routes. They decide design. So there are multiple agencies, multiple groups, multiple developers keenly interested in the continuation of the Putnam Greenway past 230th. It's a very complicated and live situation. If you'd like to consult the April meeting of the Environment and Sanitation, where we had a meeting with Metro North to discuss the relocation of their uh, proposed relocation of their garbage facilities to Marble Hill, please do so. The community board is keenly interested, Marble Hill community, NYCHA, and we hope the entire board will get behind our efforts to bring Metro North to the table. But Metro North really is, and that issue is not material to the application in front of PDC. The, the, the agencies that you may want to talk to are the City Planning Commission and the Department of City Planning. And I say that because they're the ones who included the prospect of a continuation of the Greenway south of the 2011 ULURP. That was not PDC, that was CPC. And they made the recommendation. We are continuing on that recommendation and all force, but that is not part of the approval of the design in front of the PDC. And in fact, to introduce things that are absent or missing from the application that the applicant has no control over, and I'm talking about uh, DPR and DEP, it would be a destructive effort on the part of the community board to introduce things into this that would point out a part of the application that's not there and over which the applicants have no control, okay? Because the city of New York does not own that. It is not currently in design. So at this point, Deb, unless you think differently, we're not gonna take any amendment of that kind um, because it's not party to the, it's not material to the PDC decision. And we want the PDC to make an informed judgment about what's in front of them not about what's not in front of them. Does everyone under see that? That we would be introducing things that they can't see. If you want, no one wants this continuation more than the environment and uh, parks committees, but you're introducing information to a decision-making body that they cannot see. And it's not within the submission by law because they can't talk about property they don't own. It would be unfair say, to the applicants to introduce what's not there. Wait, 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 wait. Deb has the floor now. Deb. 
Oh, I just I just wanted to add that we had a good discussion of this and when the committees were met and and that you know that we wanted to do a resolution that was about the presentation that we were given with the idea that we would be essentially the audience for this presentation is to the P, is the PDC and that this is about the design of the existing property that is owned and the greenway that they are building that we still fully intend to advocate in the new board year for the continuation of it, but that that is kind of, that's phase two, that's the next step. And that, that uh, I think it was fairly uniform that the committees did not want to have that be part of this particular resolution. Although we agree with David uh, Gelman that, you know, that that's an important piece of this and that it will be part of, but it should be part of a different resolution. Yeah, th this, this proposal was made and rejected. Okay, so I think that's enough level. on that. Um, at this I, point, I, I think that's enough. That really, I, I, no, uh, Laura, David, one last Laura, word. Laura, David. Laura, don't throw Bob, don't Bob, Laura Bob, me. Bob wanted to answer Marty's question. I had uh, another comment on this. Okay, the the, the statement that. Um, I'm sorry, point of order, Mr. Gelman, you still have to be acknowledged. You don't just get to speak over the chair because you feel this, it's your right to fine. be. Fine. Okay, There's, Laura. Uh, uh, Laura. This is the chair's meeting. David, one final comment. And I do want to say two committees voted on this and they and you, they heard your arguments and they rejected it in committee. I know that. They I was there. respect that. Yes, right. Okay. Last comment, David. Go ahead. So, um, Bob, you talk about the um, the lack of design, but the design is such that the water at 230th Street will go into an underground conduit. So it is an element of the design already. And in terms of the description of um, the, the the conduit actually starting further up north, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, further north, uh, because it's too narrow, it's not so. The reason I spoke to the engineer on this project on both matters. They are going underground, one because of the proximity of the existing parking uh, garages, which is where Chuck was talking about this proposed development. Uh, so the, the conduit was there. And then uh, the other reason for doing it is because of the design uh, need to put in a conduit below 230th Street for the railroad tracks. So these are design elements that are already in play and our resolutions are statements of desire and not just, oh, we 100% approve, we approve some. I absolutely approve of this project. I just think we should state that we also desire them to explore how they could uh, convince a, a sister agency to uh, uh, provide the space to continue this all the way down to the Harlem because it is the city's plan and design to have the, the Greenway go all the way down to the David, South yeah, Bronx no, 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 and around to the airport. I don't to need the lecture. I don't need the lecture. I don't need the lecture. Wait, wait, the wait you're repeating the yourself. Harlem. So I respect your opinion. We all respect your opinion. Chuck, is your hands up from before? It's from before. I've oh, OK. So, um, we will uh this has been very uh interesting but i think the committees are sticking with the scope of work and i think that we have discussed this and every hand has been handled so let's move on to the next resolution thank you all it's uh education okay and sylvia you're up okay thanks um this is a resolution that um was submitted uh by the um, library as a summer festival uh, celebrating the hip hop uh, celebration. Uh, I brought it up in um, May and uh, there was some concern because they want to close West 231st Street between Tibbet Avenue and Collier um, for pretty much a whole day from 10 o'clock in the morning until five o'clock. And the committee um, had concerns about that being that it's such a active uh, street, bus-wise, traffic-wise, and whatever. And um, we laid it over until um, uh, June, no, uh, I guess it was April and May. Um, in any case, um, the committee has approved it. 
unfortunately, it can't go to the general um, meeting because uh, it takes place on 28th of June. Our meeting is on the 29th. So therefore we have to um, pass it on to SAPO uh, as a committee resolution. Um, that's it. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Sylvia. Oh, wait, yeah, I see Bob Bender's hand up. Oh, excuse me, I'm so, so sorry, so sorry. That's uh, all right. Uh, Sylvia, um, what is, what's the plan with regard to the buses on West 231st Street? Uh, that's up to the MTA. I don't know. We uh, put a condition on that we are giving the approval um, if the 50th precinct uh, approves it, and they have. So um, it's oh. a go. But so uh, has it, was there discussion at the committee meeting about the, the bus routes, about how yes. the buses would be rerouted? Yeah. Yes, we tried to, we didn't have the MTA there, but we as a committee felt that maybe they would be um, diverted uh, one uh, block uh, to avoid the um, 231st Street in front of the library. Uh, so um, then it was supposed to go to the MTA to make a decision as to how they were going to handle it. And um, that's really where we, kind of step back and it went to MTA. Well, let me ask you, do you, do you think it's appropriate to add uh, a clause to the effect that this is uh, subject to the approval of the MTA, subject to the approval of bus rerouting by the MTA? Well, I, we believe that the 50th precinct was taking care of that because they really are the agency that uh, would uh, be involved in the safety and um, what's going on in, in, in our district. So uh, we felt that that was covering both. Okay, That's thank you. Uh, Margaret, your hand is up, Margaret. Uh, no? She took uh, it down. Sorry, talking to myself. Um, I just wanted to mention for the record that my, I had followed up with the office, but I'll circle back noting, you know, just change in staffing. But I did abstain from this vote and my vote's not recorded there, but I'll just follow up with the office so that we can correct it. Oh, okay, oh. on the resolution. We'll change that, uh, Margaret. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Rosemary. Um, uh, uh, just so I understand, this is a committee vote. This is not a board vote. So the board has exactly. not voted on the SAPO. And, and just so what, what is the next step? Is it the intention to send in a committee vote stating this is not the full board, but this is a committee vote or, or send nothing because we don't have a board vote on this? Uh, uh, Pablo, has, Pablo has spoken to SAPO and they know that it's coming in this direction uh, just as a committee vote rather than a um, general, uh, you know, the board vote because there just isn't enough time to do it. I guess there's no time, the calendar is against you. Okay, but it's, it's understood this is a committee vote, not the full board. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chuck. Is this something, the uh, SAPO application, that we're interested in? Because if you are, you need to know a couple of facts. One, the gentleman who ran the bus uh, division of the MTA, who had been there forever in three days and is superb, left about three, four weeks ago. So I will make no guarantees as to whether or not his successor will be able to pick it up in time. I would strongly recommend, if you are interested in it, a letter should go to the MTA bus division, forthwith telling them committees approved it, and we are asking you to move forward. The other day, there was something on Riverdale Avenue. The police were notified one hour after it started and the barricades went up late. So I think you need to uh, be kind of careful about this. I will check into that, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
uh, moving along under committee member issues for discussion. Um, David, you're on for the FY25 capital and expense budget priorities. Um, okay. um, uh, uh, I was going to be made co-host so we can go through the, the details of this. I just want to remind everybody, when I sent this out to uh, all board members um, and exec uh, a month ago before the exec meeting, uh, we've done this every year where uh, I and and, and pre prior times the the uh, the chair and the uh, uh, district manager went through the list, uh, obviously, um, and and we took them base in this case on nearly eighty requests. There were uh, uh, twenty uh, different uh, sources of uh, Microsoft Word and Excel and email, um, and looked at them at the in the order they were received. And as usual. Uh, this uh, list, these two lists that um, I developed, um, I try to prioritize on behalf of the whole community, not just the individual committees, is subject to review and discussion um, and uh, reorder by the executive committee. Uh, please note that uh, starting with the order received, these uh, capital and expense uh, priority lists are based on several factors which may or may not be weighted to everyone's preference, but they do take consideration of the following. Community input, urgency, the severity of the problem, geography within the uh, community district, equity across the district, um, immediate and or broad community impact, uh, redundancy to other requests, uh, and whether it's already been budgeted or in process. So therefore, in accordance with our annual practice, um, our two uh, initial lists of um, the fiscal year 25 uh, capital expense budget priorities are based on submissions from your committees. As usual, I would have liked to review these with the district manager and with the chair, but given the absence of the district manager and the time necessary for our leadership to identify a new one, I've not reviewed these with anyone, although I did share uh, the background uh, with Laura a, a week and a half ago. Um, and just a reminder that uh, while our numbers are approximately 40 uh, each on the um, capital and expense budget priorities, the borough president's office advises that no more than 25 to 30 request items should be submitted for um, capital and, ex and for expense. And unofficially, and those after the number five don't really get their consideration anyhow. So my role here is merely to uh, compile and administer these lists, getting them ready for submission to OMB and the borough president's office uh, for and, and for um, uh, borough consoles during the summer. But I have no more role in the content or the priority order than each of you. So having said that, in, um, um, uh, uh, Farah or uh, I, I don't know if it's Luke or uh, uh, Pablo, um, are you uh, making me uh, co-host? Yes, so I, can... I shared huh? you as co-host. Okay. Co uh, okay, so bear with me a moment as I do cool. this. Um, the frankly, the, frankly, this is the first time I've ever done um, uh, being co-host and sharing. Okay, so uh, um, are the list in front is the capital budget request fiscal twenty five uh, draft? Is that in front of everybody now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, I open the floor to any comments from any uh, committee members. Can you um, zoom it in? It, I can barely read it. Uh, oh, it's too small? Uh, yeah, it's... Is it's, that what you're saying? It's too small? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that better? It could be bigger. Okay. How's that? How's that work for you? Would you like it bigger? That's good, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, That's so... David. Yes, Chuck. Chuck, is your hands up? It is. David, okay, Chuck. I think you need to have uh, uh, some information. I am told by people who have actual knowledge that all of the agencies have been told or will be told at the highest levels, start cutting the budget on both uh, capital and uh, organizational is in extremis uh, and they're going to be massive cuts. I tell you that 
only because I don't want to do anything that gives people a sense that is unrealistic as to what can be achieved. Mm -hmm. So watch it, please. Okay, is this going to be part of a uh, so-called PEG program to eliminate a gap? I don't know what it is, but uh, Jacques Gia, who is the budget director, tells me they are for the first time for real in deep two deaths. Okay. Well, again, th these are our um, uh, budget requests that the uh, agencies consider, uh, and they do as they may with them if it fits within their guidelines, but it's really just informing them of our priorities within the community district. Uh, what I want to do is not to elevate expectations. Right, right. And also another avenue um, uh, that can be pursued separate from this is conversations with uh, the council member. But having said that, uh, looking at uh, this, these first eight, um, are there any uh, particular comments? So, uh, oh Dave, yeah, Debs. Oh. So um, I'm just looking at the parks ones and uh, the, the um, I mean, hey, there's only two parks committee ones, which is unfortunate because, you know, the, the capital is kind of most of our budget priorities. But also, there seem to be a couple that did not that are on this list that are that were not on our top ten list. Um, so uh, I'm seeing uh, where was it? Um, sorry, like um, number eighteen in update for Independence Park Dog Run. Like that one was not in our top ten. I'm sorry, um, number 18? Number 18 is TNT Dickinson Avenue. I'm look. oh, maybe this is a new order from the one that I, I just uh, opened up the download from. No, well, I, I, look at what's on the screen. I, I don't know what you're looking at. I'm just looking at the, the materials we received from the meeting this evening. Um, I don't know what that is. This, this is what I distributed on May 3rd. Okay, because can you, can you scroll down for just sure. so I see one parks thing? That's right. That was in our. And then this one okay. on Marble Hill Playground Lighting, uh, number 14. Right. Um, the um, the uh, restoration of uh, Kingsbridge Heights Community Center, I, um, is that? Uh, that's 37. Right. It, it seems very low for um, uh, a number two priority? Well, the, 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 that's, I, I have no comment on it. It's up to the uh, your fellow chairs. Well, I mean, it, it, I, I, I would just propose that it be, it should come back up into the top 10 someplace. Well, uh, what do you, what do our, our fellow chairs have to say about that? This again, this is not my list. This is just a first, pass relative to the district, but it's up to the executive committee to do the priorities. Right. I mean, I think that there are a lot of TNT, I mean, like the top 10 is, as far as I could tell, the seven or top of the top 27 are TNT. Um, so maybe there's some choices on step streets that we could, I mean, and I love step street projects, don't get me wrong, uh, but maybe there's something we can move up. Um, so that we need to make some space for the Kingsbridge Heights Community Center. When your committee met, the uh, yeah. was the Kingsbridge Heights Community Center at the top of your you know, in in terms of your priorities, your list. Yeah, yeah, I've got my priorities pulled up, and I've got number one is the redesign of the Bailey Playground, which is there. Which is there. Number two is the Kingsbridge Heights Community Center, and then number three is the Marble Hill Playground lighting, which is there. Um, and then four was the lower Bruss Park staircase. Um, so those were kind of our top four. Oh, okay, let me say that um, there's a lot of work to be done on the list. You had mentioned step streets. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things Farrah will do uh, is speak with DOT. Uh, and Kira did a very good job with this find, to find out is this whatever step street already in your master plan, capital plan, in which case, if it's already funded, 
it wouldn't go on this list. And so. Right. Well, we did that work on the TNT committee. I mean, like the, the right, stuff right. here, we've already cross-referenced. I mean, I, I do appreciate your comment. And Lisa sent an email today to David and I, I don't know if anyone else got it, regarding could this list reflect the priorities that the committee did with their uh, with their list that they submitted. And if they thought something was number one, could that be higher on this list, um, you know, to kind of follow that scope? Right. Everybody understands that you have all these committees, so it has to be, you know, shared. But I think to Lisa's point and, you know, your point, I think that that should be looked at. I didn't um, interface with this because I want to leave that to the new chair of the board. And we have a new district manager. Right. And so I know a lot of work is going to be done. But if if the chairs can throw out their ideas like you just have, um, it would just be very helpful to David and, and, and all of us. But um, th this, this is just a draft. Is there is there any tradition um, of just doing at least one meeting in public just for the the chairs to discuss with the budget chair like an order for these things? It's a little bit more. They find like that it often uh, that the discussion like now where we can, we don't have time to go into a full discussion of all of these priorities or to go through the pull out all of the lists from other. I mean, I haven't seen all of the lists from all of the other committees to see what we're trying to blend together, but it seems like that would be a good actual committee meeting to try to do more publicly. And I, I, I don't know of any tradition of doing it in that way so that we can kind of make the sausage a little bit more um, together as a group. I just think that that would be helpful. That's the purpose of this meeting. This is a, this is a public meeting and all the uh, uh, committee members, executive committee members are here. So, um, but so David, but, I would like to, I don't feel as though I can adequately tell you like what an order should be though, without seeing from the other committees, what their ranked list is. This is, is because there, is, there are things here that I know are not in the order that they were in on the parks list. So I assume that there's been some give and take here. The, the, there has, the priorities have been identified here. And if you want to change a priority for one of your items, or if another chair wants to change the priority of their items, uh, that's what the give and take has always been for this process in the May and June meetings. We weren't able to do it in May, but I appreciate your input. Um, Bob Bender. Yeah, uh, David, I want to get some clarification on exactly sure. that issue. Are these, are these items in a different order from the order that the individual committee submitted? In other words, is the second parks item the same as the number two parks committee item that was uh, that was sent to you and and um, that was sent in to you. Uh, not necessarily, and it never has been necessarily in that order. Uh, I, I thoroughly disagree with that last statement, David. It has been the case okay. in the past that we have always followed the committee's uh, priorities. Uh, otherwise, you you assuming that you're the one who put this together are changing around the priorities that, that were identified by the individual committees. Okay. And that's not appropriate. Okay, uh, Bob, let me, let me uh, clarify something for you, since I'm the one who's done it for the last five years. Yes, they have. Now, I appreciate that this may not be an order that somebody wants, and that's fine. I have no problem with any of the orders being changed. This is just a first pass at 40 plus 40, uh, budget priorities. And if number 20 or uh, 39 becomes number one, I'm fine with that. No, yeah, that's, I, no that's, that's not that's, that's not the issue I'm raising, David. If the committee sub, if a committee submits 10 capital uh, uh, budget projects in an order ranked from one to 10, mm -hmm. why would you change the order when you amalgamate all the different committee requests? Why Consider would you change the order from that individual committee? As I said earlier, it considers community input, urgency, severity of the problem, the geography, the equity across um, the, the, the district, uh, the immediate need, whether it's redundant and whether it's already budget. But again, David, those if, if, uh, if number two should be further up, I'm okay with that. But but who no all those different criteria that you just mentioned 
who made the judgment about those criteria and how they changed in, in the this case i did you did in prior years <laughs> i did it in in uh, uh consultation with laura or rosemary with uh kira and, and, and may i say family. and may i say that kira and i looked at the priorities of a committee mm -hmm. and tried to respect those priorities. If this was their first choice, second choice, uh -huh. we did not, we tried to respect that. And you and I did not have a discussion this year on this, but in previous years, uh, Kira and I battled for that because we respected no, I... the work of the committees. I also I... want to throw out that we will be meeting on this in September and we don't vote on it until October. So we have September and October to further discuss and refine. And um, I'm, we're, we're going to look at what the committees did. I'm sure that the next chair is gonna look at that and the new <laughs> district manager are gonna look at that. So this is not etched. No, um, absolutely. And, I have, and that's why it says very clearly on the top draft, and in watermark in the body draft. Again, this is not my, mine. I I do not care how these rows get changed. Okay, so good. Sylvia. I'm glad to hear that. Um, but so well, Laura, I've said it, that's the third time I've said it in this conversation. And I've told you that repeatedly over the years. And then by, and by the way, for clarity, you were given this information a week and a half ago, but declined to put a, because, uh, to the input to me. Sylvia, because I, you're I'm up. not fighting with you. I'm leaving it to the next chair. Sylvia, so, you're up. This, this is the chair's meeting all. So, Laura, no, actually, I, I am conducting this part of the meeting. No, Sylvia, no. you're up. Yes, I hear you. Um, I, I uh, have to agree with um, Laura that uh, normally we do this in September uh, to uh, negotiate um, placement of, of our uh, priorities. Uh, I don't know why we're doing it tonight. And uh, I thought that this was only to uh, prepare you for the consultations, uh, David. And that's why we do it in, um, we have to give them to you uh, early on in, in April, May, uh, so that you have that information. I don't know why this year is different. It, it, uh, Sylvia, it's not different. You're absolutely right. This is in preparation for, as I said at the beginning, the, in preparation for the budget consults that will be held early in the summer. But uh, Laura is also right. We don't actually vote on these orders until uh, we discuss it in uh, September and we actually vote on in October. Those are all absolutely correct. This is just a working session. That's all. Chuck. Uh, I don't know. Go ahead. Why are we doing it twice? Well, why don't we just do it in September or the way we've done it in, in many years? Because uh, to get, as you said, to get your input for the budget consults that will be held this summer. If people are satisfied with this as a draft document and in, uh, on an interim basis for conversations with other community boards this summer, that's fine. The past few years, we have done something in June. We have. Okay. And then worked on it over the summer as well. Great, absolutely. So, okay, I appreciate. All. I appreciate that. So, uh, disregard what I said. Okay, uh, Chuck. The following requires each of you to be very careful in terms of what you say about what you're about to hear, and secondly, that you use sound political judgment as it goes down the road. I'm looking at the first two items: the housing authority. Uh, as I have tried to say in, some months ago in a different context, uh, I am a member of the board of HDC. HDC's role in housing is materially expand, expanded now in that we are a principal place for finding money for people to do anything in housing in the city of New York. That brings you to the first two items. Uh, at the last meeting about a week ago, we voted to give almost $500 million for the redoing of Edenwall houses, uh, places in lousy shape, and it's gonna need a lot of work. I tell you that because Edenwall 
is a project that's been in the works forever and three days. It is in bad shape, but it's a Bronx project. And this is a competition between five boroughs and five boroughs members of the council. So understand the following in this context. One, approximately three years ago, we gave $418 million to the Housing Authority to do exactly, in part at least, what number two is all about, roof repairs and drainage. And we specifically targeted roofs and drainage at Marble Hill. That was a project I had undertaken to do. Not much of that money has been spent for that purpose. That's the problem of the Housing Authority and characteristic of its incompetence. But people are going to see that when this comes up and say, why do we do it again? So I need you to think about it. I don't want you to, however, jump to the following conclusion. I'm here to give you information, not to make a recommendation other than the one I'm about to make. I would not take it up because it would be politically bad for the community board to not put housing authority projects at the top of the list. They need it. They need it desperately. But there are significant budgetary issues. We glommed on to close to half a million dollars for one project, half a billion, for one project in the Bronx. Whether we can glom on to a hell of a lot more, I don't know. There's only one vote and the chairman of HPD who are Bronx votes. The others are all other counties. So I wanted you to know again, so you don't get expectations in the wrong direction. I'm just giving you information. It's not information you need to pass around, okay? Very good, thank you. I mean, I, I must ad admit, I, I'm appalled that we even have to uh, have one and two there. I think that they should be done, but uh, like you, I think it's very important that we recognize the severe, the severe problem. Uh, Bob Fanuzzi, you're up next. Uh, Madam Chair, it would be impossible for us to evaluate other committees' priorities if, the request were not in the priority order that the committees voted on. So um, in a further iteration of this, could the original committee priorities be reinstated? Because it'll help us make that comprehensive judgment that many of the committee mem the chairs are asking for. So that's my first comment. Um, secondly, the, um, the only budget chair to change the order um, has been David Gelman in community mm -hmm. board aid history. So um, they've always been brought to the community exec in the order, you know, with choices made about which committees go above other committees, but they've never been reordered. They've always reinstated the order of the committee. And lastly, Deb's comment um, is really important about transparency. And um, I do recommend public hearings in September because uh, we've had public hearings in October and um, then we take a vote and it's kind of too short a window between hearing about what the public says about our priorities and the vote. And uh, so I recommend right off the bat having our public hearing in September so that we can bring back to exec in October, what did we learn? What do we make a final? So we make an informed decision based on community input and our final vote then in October. So those are my comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> That's, a, that's an interesting idea, Bob. Thank you, really. Um, I think we seriously should consider it. Uh, Julie Reyes. Hi, um, in regards to the budget, I just have three points to make. Um, I agree with everyone that the list of orders from the committees in past has always been from at least in the, in the initial years that I was on, maybe in recent years, things have changed. But when the committee submits their list, it's put in that order. If Deborah has uh, an issue, an item rather, that was number one, it shouldn't be like item number 37 and at the bottom of her list. That's with any committee budget. Um, then she also brought up the fact that we, Deborah brought up the fact that we shouldn't, you know, why are we discussing this with exec? Yes, in years past, it is discussed in exec, but really to flush it out, it should be held at the budget committee meeting 
which includes, unless the bylaws have changed, because that would include the chairs of certain committees. So discussing this at length at an executive meeting, no, the budget committee should have a meeting and flush it out there. Um, unless, unless the bylaws have changed, Marty, if you're wrong, you can let me know. But doing it like this and putting it in random order on your own, that should never be. And that's it. Just put them in order as the committees submit it. Um, have a committee meeting, a budget committee meeting, and flush it out, and then bring it to the exec as it was done in previous years. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, uh, no, that's that's not so. That's not how it was done in previous years. And uh, there was never a strict uh, one through five, one through ten uh, order. It, it largely has, and, and it, even here, largely uh, reflects the order um, of submission. Uh, but uh, it, it's never not been uh, changed. And the, the, the key uh, parts of the uh, budget committee are essentially the budget chair and the board chair. And because, as I described earlier, um, the, the uh, and also the district manager and the fact that the district manager just started two days ago uh, and uh, the budget chair, uh, as she noted, um, has been spending a lot of, you know, uh, direct uh, time in the office in the last uh, many weeks, uh, didn't, I don't believe had much of an opportunity to review that, which I did uh, uh, six weeks ago. Um, but I, again, I welcome any actual changes. If somebody wants to take number 39 and make it number three, and if, the, if you all uh, agree with it, I'm fine with that. Absolutely Dave, fine with it. Uh, so Nick, uh, Dave, you're respectfully, No, wait, I'm not finished. Okay. You called me and I just- Oh, I'm sorry, your hand was Re down. Respectfully, no, respectfully, um, unless the bylaws have changed, it's not up to you to do the changes. Your committee can meet and then put them in order and bring it to the exec and then we flush it out. That's effectively Marty, what has if, happened. If, if the budget committee met? Yes, because that's basically me and Laura. Go no, look, it's back and look at you and Laura. Go, go, go back Unless, and look at the bylaws. And okay. it says the chairs of, of the committees. They specifically name the committees unless it has changed. That's why I say if it's changed, then Marty, please correct me. But it's, it's the budget chair and certain committee chairs are part of the budget committee. Unless it has changed. And if I, it's I, changed, I, I, Julie, then, I think you're... Then our, I will go back and look at it one more time, but I believe you're. you're well, I'm looking at the website notion. right now. I'm looking at the website. And, okay. and if then if it's changed and I stand corrected, and then we have to change what's listed on the public website. That's fine. But it's, fine. It, but it's never been. That's why there's so much um, backlash Julie, tonight. Please. And it's never been like that. Uh, please don't say it's never been like that because it has been for I'm more than five years. I'm talking about the backlash. Years. The backlash. Okay. Well. well I don't know who was. Well, there's usually. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I'm not going to go back and forth. Okay. I'm not going to go back and forth. Okay. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think that in terms of the ordering, uh, one of the things that I've noticed in looking at the responses is that regardless of where they are on this draft or this sheet, the agencies, the pertinent agencies that uh, the respective requests are made or aligned with, uh, we'll look at those. And we, you know, we've gotten, just as an example, in economic development, we've had uh, requests that were very low on CB8's priority list, but were definitely reviewed and taken into consideration. And in, in some cases, um, it, it, you know, they were funded. I don't, I'm sure there were other people that requested it and they were, may have been going to get, going to be get, getting funded anyways. But my point is that the order that the committee uh, submits is 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 more important in my mind than the aggregated order of all these things. Uh, that that being said, I think that the process that's at least if it's collaborative in in terms of of the budget committee, if it's the board chair and the budget chair and the district manager, that's fine. If we want to take a look at that and see if there should be another step in that process where the, the budget committee actually has a public meeting where chairs of each of the committees and 
anybody else in the community can meet and provide their input aside from doing it before the board meeting, uh, which is what we do in the fall, which really makes it for a very difficult board meeting. We have to start a half an hour earlier, sometimes an hour. Um, it seems to me like we should have a separate meeting uh, or the, the budget committee is a committee. The committee should meet. Uh uh, I, I would just say I I think that that would be quite chaotic. But if that's what the the it's board would, uh, Nick Nick, let me finish, please. I think it would be quite chaotic. However, if that's what the board wants, that's great. Let's do it. Absolutely. Let's let's change the, the process. I have no problem with that. Again, I th this is not my budget. This is just my look at the community district, and that's it. I've yet to hear a single input of number 17 should move up to number seven. I, and, and that's you, the, the executive committee members and the whole board have had this available to them for five weeks. So, uh, Margaret Della. Mar oh, Mar I just wanted to, oh. excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry, you, you disappeared off the list for a moment. Yeah, please carry on. All right. So um, back to an earlier comment, just to uh, remind us that last year, of course, obviously things can change. We did agree to keep um, the housing. We did agree, broadly speaking, to keep items that had not concluded or been completed on the list um, because we wanted to be able to keep them on the list, obviously we're not asking for more money because the money has probably already been allocated, but we did want it to be on the list as to demonstrate in the community that these are our list of priorities. So in terms of number one and number two, that falls into that discussion from last year. If we want to revise that, obviously we can, um, but I do think not just politically speaking, but just so that we can demonstrate to the community that these remain our top priorities and that we continue to push for them, whether it's uh, what we're submitting to the borough president or what we're advocating with our elected officials. Um, we're utilizing this not only as our requests, um, sometimes lofty as they are, um, but it is a list of priorities to demonstrate what uh, our priorities are in the community. I did just want to personally say I do feel as though the the conduct of this meeting is really becoming uncomfortable for me, uh, and so I would encourage everyone to take a step back to speak respectfully, um, and just so that we can keep this uh, meeting going and hopefully conclude by this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Margaret. I agree with you on both counts, uh, Marty. Uh, first of all, respect to Julie's comment, the bylaws have not changed, but I cannot remember in recent history when there was a budget committee of individuals getting together for such discussion. So uh, what we've been doing by practice in the last several years has been exactly what was described. But I think it's important to go back and look at whether or not such a committee should meet. I also believe uh, that what... Uh, what David said initially was that there needs to be some concern for equity across the district so that some of the really good ideas in one district are taken care of and the good ideas in another part of the district are not. That needs to be addressed by someone who's somewhat impartial. However, I definitely believe that the order that the committee chairs and the committees have come up with needs to be respected. And if that's their first priority and second and third, then the order as presented here ought to reflect the same order that the uh, the committee had come up with. So uh, those are my concerns. And I will address the last comment that was made about uh, civility uh, when I make my comments concerning the LRE. Okay, thank you, uh, Julia. I just um, two statements about I have is um, one, I know that normally there is some negotiating that happens in this space of like, I would like to move mine up to this and everything else. But I want to acknowledge that that is hard to do when I don't know what other people's priorities were for committees I'm not a part of. Um, 
So it's hard to speak to what parks submitted um, if I was not a part of that process. So I don't know if others agree and I'm wrong every day, but it might be helpful to have that list. I understand that you, David, did a lot of work in taking things into consideration, but um, and it's, uh, it would be unfair to ask you, you know, why did you decide this was this on the spot today when we have had this, but I think it would be helpful for folks to understand um, why things may have been moved um, and the justification, because I think what we're hearing from some of the chairs is they took some of the things you considered as well when they put their order together. So there may be a communication issue here. Um, tonight is operating the way that I understood it was supposed to be operating from the years I've been chair, but I do have to express a little bit of concern if we were supposed to be having budget meetings that have not happened in at least the last three years. Um, if we're not following our own bylaws, I think that is a moment for us all to reflect on do we, <laughs> how well do we know our bylaws and if things need to be changed, we have a process for that and we should change them. But that, you know, um, our bylaws should be our foundation on how we operate. Um, and if we're not, we should make moves to modify them. Thank you. Fair enough. I, I assure you that we are following the bylaws. Um, and uh, the, the, this, again, is an opportunity for all the members of the executive committee to reflect on the community district. Uh, this happens to be my take on it. Uh, but again, I don't care if it gets reordered. reordered. I will tell you that in years gone by, the, the board chair and the DM and I reflected on the community district. And this is the, a, a good opportunity to use your background, not just uh, chair of your committee, but your observation of the residents uh, and the institutions within our community district. And that's the purpose of uh, this evening. Uh, Rosemary. Uh, yeah, just um, uh, two very quick comments just on, on, on the bylaws. This is the budget committee that you're looking at. It is the chair of the board and whatever officer the chair of the board wants to put on the budget committee, the budget chair and the chair of all the standing committees, not the special committees, the standing committees. That is why traditionally this list comes to the executive committee because the executive committee for all purposes, all purposes, is the budget committee. So uh, just that for, for, for the bylaws, they're simple and clear, and it seemed to work to, uh, otherwise the executive committee, all the chairs have to get together for yet another meeting, uh, which is fine. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that the, the requirement for the October, uh, se uh, September hearing is fine as long as it is done by October, because that's in the city charter. We must do it no later than October. So those are the two things, the city charter and the bylaws, and there you go. I hope that was helpful. Uh, and and to, be, to be a little bit more clear, October is important because by the end of October, we have to actually type it into the system. So um, uh, are there any particular changes that uh, anybody wants to make to this uh, list of capital requests? And again, so, this is so not David, sealed by no means. So David, um, I, I know I appreciate that you are, as you say that you're flexible about the order. I think that the first thing that we need to do is go back and put this back, put everything back in the order, like within housing, like they should reflect, as Bob Bender said, it should reflect the actual order of the housing committee so that if there's things that are different, that they, they should just get swapped so that because I think that would also address some of the concerns that Julie was having of um, uh, of not knowing what other committees uh, vote, like what their other committees orders were, because it does actually help a lot if all of the housing um, pieces are in the housing order and all the parks are in the parks order, because then you just know by looking at this list. Um, so I would say that if you could do that, that would be a really good um, next step. Um, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I do think it would be uh, better to have a public, just to have a meeting with the chairs that's not part of this, so we're not dragging the exec out too long, and it's not necessarily part of the September meeting, because again, that also, it, it, it would drag that out too long, but that, I would recommend that. 
But as a first step, just putting this in the order of the committees would be very helpful. Yes, I hear you. Um, I, I disagree, but I, I think there's a good compromise that can be had. Um, I think if uh, the chairs went back and looked at the list and said, well, I think that number 17 should be number seven, I will work on that um, rather than just because uh, do uh, do I only give one to housing and then one to parks and one to t and or do I keep the two of housing and the one of parks? Uh, I believe a good approach to this would be for each of the chairs to go back and say, well, gee, this number 17 is really critical to our committee and reflects a, an important need within the community district and really should be in front of, of uh, TNT and education and public safety and therefore should be number four, what have you. So that's what I recommend. Uh, Nick Fazio. No, thank you for that. I I, I was uh, just going to suggest or recommend the same thing that we go back to our respective committees uh, and request that each of them take a closer look at this and then, um, you know, communicate. And then, uh, you know, assuming that there is that collaborative process that that's in place, um, you know, I, mean, I could see how this could be difficult. In other words, like, we have economic development that's really low on the list. I, I, it's hard for me to say I want it at number seven or number six or number five because, you know, we do have to take a holistic approach. Of course, you know, we're looking at it from the committee perspective. So um, I think that sort of iterative process would be would be helpful. And to Deb's point, I think as, as much, uh, you know, we, we put the, as much time we put in, it'll sort of help that process in September. Okay. Um, well, again, th this is not needed within the next couple of weeks. So, oh, well, uh, Margaret, uh, one final comment? Yeah, I was going to say that uh, I think we should take the top two priorities from, well, to what Deb said, uh, take the top two priorities from each committee. And perhaps that's that's actually a compromise, that we take those put them to the top of the list, as I think pretty much everyone else has mentioned that there's limited funds and limited priorities, but to take the top two or three from each committee, and then we debate which should fall where, um, so that at least it's a limited number, it would be perhaps 20 that we would evaluate, and that that would at least give the chairs or the committees the opportunity to say these are our top top absolute priorities and then it's up to the exec to then uh, prioritize them in a discussion like this rather than us having 40 and 40 as you mentioned earlier well I, uh, yeah uh, thank you sorry um <laughs> you probably heard me say many many times please don't submit 10 each and and a couple of did a couple did uh, or eight or ten each um Doing two per is arbitrary and does not uh, end up reflecting the district-wide um, uh, perspective. So therefore, I, I, I would like to recommend, well, this is what I am gonna recommend. Uh, uh, we need to get this thing going to be prepared. So by next Friday, the 16th, please look at the, both of the lists and then make whatever recommendations you wanna make with respect to your committee, but also your observation of the community district. And then I will try to collate it as best as possible. It's gonna be gargantuan, but I will uh, do that. So um, any other comments? I'm not okay. quite sure I understand what you just said, David. Okay, so take the two uh, lists, um, this, uh, this and the expense priorities, Take a look at them and then uh, make your edits uh, as an individual chair and your observations as a member of the executive committee and your perspective on the whole community district and say that such and such should be um, uh, uh, number seven and, and, and moving uh, seven, eight, nine, et cetera, down. Um, and then I will try to uh, collate those comments as best as possible. David, so, our last two I comments from Bob and uh, Julia, because uh, I think we need to wrap up. Bob? Bob Fanuzzi? 
He's muted. Uh, yeah, I'm no. sorry. Laura, I, I wanted to ask if you were done with this item because I think we've made our preference clear. No, I'm um, not done. I, I was actually going to I was actually going to say that in my view, the first thing that needs to be done is that this gets reordered not by individual committee chairs, but by David using the priorities that the in the committee chairs submitted and the reason yeah, we, I we, say, yeah, yeah. the reason i we, say we, that that seems to me uh would save a lot of time everybody understands that nobody everybody can't be in the top 10 everybody but in the past we we tried to give tnt parks we tried to give respect to each committee and in whatever form it fell, it ended up in the order that that committee spent months formulating and handing in their priorities. There's no point in a committee handing in their priorities to have it ignored when a list such as this is made up. Because okay. then it's that, and, and so we're asking people to look at this. It's, I think you need to re redo this list so it's more realistic in line with the committees. For example, in, in, in the um, expense budget, the number one is the rehab of the opening of building number nine laundry room. That's the number one of our expense. A housing committee had that at the very end. And yet here it is, number one. That wouldn't make sense. That's why I don't think we could work on the list as it is now. Okay. That's right. my opinion. I'm okay, leaving then, it. I, like I, I appreciate said, it. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, do do recall, Laura, that exactly two years ago we discussed doing that, and it was rejected at the exec committee as unwieldy. You you wanted the top four, the top four, the top four, and it was expressly rejected. Yeah, uh, because they had so, been, all right, so they Julia, had been Julia, chaos, Julia, Julia, chaos it, before that. But the Laura, 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 Laura. Thank I, I, you, I, Julia. I, David. I will yield to let Madam Chair finish her thought before I. Right, point of order. This is Laura's could, meeting. Could, could Actually, we have one chair, uh, please? The, one chair. The only part that the budget committee is in charge of is the budget hearing. This is not a budget hearing. This is an executive committee. At all points, the chair is in charge. There's no discussion about this. If Laura wants to end this discussion with that recommendation, then so be it. Well, this is I, not a budget that, hearing. It's more than a recommendation. I think that we have to be realistic in what we can ask the committee chairs to do at this juncture. Um, and, and it we, was rejected. Uh, but in any event, thank you, Bob Fanuzzi. Uh, I, I did say that David was going to run this segment, and he's doing a good job running the segment and uh, continue. But thank you, Bob Fanuzzi. Thank you, Laura. Um, thank you, Bob. Uh, Julia, did you actually, did you so, have a yeah, follow-up comment? I did. I actually, I guess it's more of a point of clarification as I hear you very clearly, David, that in years past, the chairs did not want this. It does seem overwhelmingly tonight that we do. Is there a formal process to vote on that? Or, I mean, because it does seem like several chairs have asked that this list be revised and sent to us with committee's mm -hmm. top choices so that we can better evaluate it. But but again, my point is at this point, the perspective that each of the chairs should be taking is their understanding of the community district, not what an individual committee wants within their realm. And that's why I think it's very important for the chairs to look at each of these items and say, Yes, this will have a broad impact on the community district, or meh, it's not so important as much as it might be a, a pet project of a committee or what have you. And I, and I don't have a problem with, you know, uh, Park saying, well, I'd, I'd actually like to swap out number three with number 17. That's fine. And what I think the chairs are saying here is I can't say my my number one should be above housing's second request if I don't know what order housing put that in. And I respect the work that you've done. And I respect that this is not something that will take you five minutes. I think you've made your point very clear. What I'm trying to emphasize here is I 
think the chairs are saying, we need this information, we need that order to do what you are asking us to do. I, I heard what you said, and this is all, all, all that information is in, uh, in front of you in terms of what uh, the um, requests are granted uh, 17 and 12 may not be the order that it was originally submitted by the committee, but your perspective as a executive committee member is the community district, not the XYZ committee. That's all I'm getting at. And I, right. I think that's the way we should uh, go forward with this. My perspective as a chair is also to respect the order that my fellow chairs have put them in. And I expect that they have taken some of that into consideration. And those respective committees know much better what economic development needs than what I as youth need. And as that's why I'm asking, do we need to vote on this? Because it does seem like everyone is asking for this and you seem reluctant to do so. So what is the process for getting that? Because if this is the budget committee, um, it does seem like there should be a mechanism for this. It's called a vote. Madam Chair, would you entertain a motion? A motion to re redo this. Revise. And re revise this and send it out using the uh, committee chair's preferred order. Yeah, the voted I committee chair. I don't chair. know why so, we'd have to vote on it. We've all said it. David, can we just do well, it? Well, actually, Laura. Can we, can, Actually, um, actually, Laura, yeah. that which I sent to you a week and a half ago, just send it to everybody. I'm sorry. I, I gave you, I gave you all of the committee priorities in the order they uh, yes, had. Yes, and I looked in the at them. order received. Yes, I asked for it, and okay. you did get it. I got it, and I okay. was appreciative because I saw right away that these were not well, Laura, Laura, reflected Laura, in Laura, this. Laura, that that that's not what I said. You have that information. Why don't you have the office send it out to the chairs okay, and we'll let do. them reflect on it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. And and we'll do. Okay. So Laura, can, uh, the thing that you're going to send is that the individual list of all the committees. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We'll send the it's a master list of all of the committees uh, in the order received and in the order they specified. Right. By, yeah. uh uh, expense and by uh, capital for those who did both. Right, so I did, did not do both that because I was I knew that this didn't reflect that, and I will send that. And uh, do we agree then to revise this to reflect that? That's that's the next step before the summer. Uh, let, let's see where we got. I mean, I still encourage people to look at the list as is that uh, I distributed, uh, but. People are welcome to do either. Actually, I, think, I don't think it's something that should be mandated. I think that uh, the chairs should do uh, what they want in that regard, whichever pair list they want. And again, I don't care about the order. I'm glad. Okay, so whatever uh, comes back, but it, it needs to come back uh, by next Friday, the 16th. I'm sorry, I, I have a point of clarification. Uh, yes. Bob, would you put a motion forward? Don't we have to vote on that motion? Yeah, I'd like to second that. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a need for a motion. We don't, uh, we don't just vote on motions. Laura, Laura's... We don't vote on motions. And uh, the, the motion is, is well received, but I think it's out of order. I think the uh, chair, late Madam Chair, needs to direct the chair of the Budgets Committee on what to do. And this discussion has gone on too long. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, David? I think I um, made my point. What I think we, we should do. Uh, yeah, the and summer? have the office do it because okay. you. I just forward them the email I sent to you. Right, but I'm talking about this list. Yeah. Okay. The capital. So th this is this is a strange well, Bob, way. Bob, Bob this. can you hold on a second, please? Sure. Laura. Um. All right. The the two lists that I sent out on May third, and the two lists I sent to you. Um. On. Uh, uh, I, it was uh, the 26th. Why don't you have the office send out both pairs of lists to each of the chairs and um, please get uh, your comments or your orders uh, back to um, me and the office by next Friday, the 16th. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not trying I, to I, I don't. Vocal, but it sounds like 
David, you're saying something different than what Laura is saying, and I'm trying to get clarity on what we're doing because I believe Laura asked that. Why this don't is you? Why don't we? The, the why, why don't Farrah? we get what we want? Yeah. Okay. Farah, you, myself, we will look at those priorities, and we'll make some switcheroos here, and it will still be problematic because it's not a perfect world. But I think the chairs. I think it will make more sense. So but that's not what the chairs asked for. Well, there's no other way. I actually think it's it. better. I think what you're suggesting is better, but that's not what the chairs asked for. Yeah, no, because the product will be, the product will be more in order with their priorities. Not perfect, but it will be more in order. It won't be like replace, you know, the, the laundry room for NYCHA is number one when the housing committee had it number 10. Well, you that's know, what I thought you were going to return to me a week ago Friday. But no, how can I, I? I'm I'm telling you that we will have to work on this, and then we'll send out a new, a revised one. That's all. I, I, I from I, there in September. It'll that, be something. All that's right. If, if that's what you're suggesting, rather than waiting till the next chair, which is what you started the meeting with, then I think the three of us should do it. And again, I do not. Have any pride of authorship on this? I do I get it. not. I, mean, I understand, but I think I there's no not, other way. And I do not care the order that it comes out in. So I think Good. that it, it would be worthwhile, say Monday or Tuesday, for you, me, and Farah to have that conversation. Right. I think we'll improve it, and then yeah. they'll look at it, and we're going to take the new chair. We'll look at it over the summer. Farah will continue. That's fine. But it, this, the way the phase it's in right now is just not workable for the individual chairs. And so I think we agree now. And um, I think it's getting late. So I think we can conclude the um, committee member issues for discussion, this, this item, and move to is there any follow up on outstanding issues? And if there is not- I'd maybe... like to address something. Oh, yes, fine. Thank you. Go right ahead, Marty. Okay, yeah, item number one is I uh, I had technical difficulties of getting in, but when I did get in, you were talking about hybrid meetings and just want to remind the chair and our new uh, DM that uh, LRE and the board voted for a set of procedures for uh, hybrid meetings and it includes a statement that will go in all future uh, notifications of meetings as to what the community can do and what uh, individuals need to do if they wish to be uh, for extraordinary circumstances, which I'm hoping, and I believe the state is hoping will be at a minimum. Item number two, uh, also Laura touched upon, at the last LRE meeting, it was brought up that, uh, actually I brought it up, that there were two articles I was aware of in the Bronx Times, which uh, highlighted the fact that there are two community boards in the Bronx who have difficulty with both civility and, uh, and use of language at various times. And as a result, at least one board reads a code of conduct prior to every board meeting. So the public would be aware of where the limits are. Uh, that was before I received my letter from the borough president of reappointment in which it was included that she came up with her own code of conduct, which I applaud her for. And uh, on the LRE uh, agenda for Monday is going to be come up with a code of conduct uh, to be shared with the board in one form or another that will be discussed so that um, we are on firmer ground, and I am uh, what, I, what I'm. Ba what I basically want to do. What happens if the committee is something else? But I plan to use the borough president's uh, a format uh, and adapt it so that uh, it's more direct for us, and only those issues which are direct for us. So those who are curious, please uh, tune in on Monday to the uh, LRE meeting. Uh, with that note, I would ask, in the question of civility, I would ask everyone to please review the tape of this meeting and determine whether or not, uh, in some cases, some people might have uh, acted in a manner different than they did 
uh, if civility was in fact on their minds in the first place. Um, I just raised that and we'll go in more deeply at the board meeting after the LRE meeting. And finally, uh, I don't know if I'm last on the agenda now as it works out, but uh, Laura, this is your probably, most probably your last uh, meeting as chair of the executive committee. And I wanna commend you for the work you've done and thank you for the work you've done. And I'm sure I'm not alone in offering that. And um, second, look forward, looking, well, I'm not looking, I am and I'm not looking forward to our in-person meetings. I'm hoping civility returns uh, when people actually face each other rather than looking at little squares on their uh, <laughs> on their screens. Uh, I know kids have had difficulty dealing with real life after spending too much time on the web. And um, so that scares me. On the other hand, uh, I look forward to our all physically being in each other's presence and wishing you well. Thank you, Morty. Um, you may have missed it, but the borough president will be sending out the code of conduct to all, all board members. I heard that, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, thank you for the kind words, Marty. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, our, Robert Fanuzzi, is your hand up from before or now? Yes, it is. I'm so sorry. I'm taking it down. Okay. I um, would also like to oh, sorry. Go commend you for leading the community board. There's few harder jobs <laughs> and, um, and there's few harder committees than the executive committee having been there. So um, congratulations, and you were deprived what every board chair lives off of, which is the oxygen of a public meeting. And um, we really are going to look forward to the, the uh, June public meeting in person, so you can have the great hurrah and farewell that you deserve. Uh, Thank you for your for your thirty years. How long, Laura? Thirty, yeah, thirty years. Thirty years of community service without pay, um, just doing the very best. So thank you, Laura, for everything. Oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Margaret. Uh, just one thing um, that I raised during my nominating um, interview is that I also think for LRE to Marty's comments that I also think there should be sort of like an escalation um, process that the committee should discuss. I can't be there um, on Monday, but I do think that it's worthwhile that we do have a point you know, certainly code of conduct the borough president has initiated for us. Thankfully, in her brilliance, she's executed that. Um, and I do think as a part of our community board that we should have a process in which during the meetings that there is sort of an escalation and that uh, we do take a, a tougher position when uh, community board members are badgering each other, speaking disrespectfully and the like. Um, and I would also recommend that there's a process that takes place outside of that meeting. I think we have to do a better job individually of checking each other um, to remain respectful, um, to limit argumentative uh, comments, to be constructive uh, and to move on. And lastly, I think that there is a a place for one-on-one -on -one conversations and referrals to the borough president when colleagues um, are not abiding by the code of conduct um, and 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 respecting uh, our colleagues. So I would ask for that process, and um, you know I would like to be a part of it uh, going forward. So thank you, Marty. I also wanted to echo what Marty said to you, Laura, you've done an amazing job. Um, and certainly we have not made it easy on you, case in point this <laughs> evening. Um, you've I think been, I lost it. I didn't, um, I didn't meet my own expectations tonight, to tell you the truth, because it was my You've worked your butt off and you've been graceful this whole time. So, you know, and you've done it with integrity and, and that's really what a public servant is. So thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay, uh, I see. Uh, just uh, two things. One, want to remind people about the street fair. I haven't contacted, but I plan on volunteering on Sunday. So I'll call the office. And uh, yes, Laura, thank you for your uh, energies and efforts on uh, our behalf. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. I uh, appreciate everybody, everything what you do. We're all volunteers. And sometimes it's more than we signed up for. So, um, you know, I, I feel I'm ending on a great note with, with great people and uh, 
I look forward to the June 29th meeting, elections, new starts, new beginnings. And um, that's it. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, everybody have a great night. Thanks. Very good discussion. Thanks. Good night. Good night.